Reserve Colonel of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, pilot instructor, military expert Roman Svitan, said in a report for Channel 24 that the Kursk region is less than 1% of the entire territory of Russia. Svitan noted that the Russians understand that in order for Ukraine to seize the Kursk region completely, it needs a half a million strong army, which it simply does not have now. From a logical point of view, they are ready not to give it up, but to wait. Even taking into account that the Ukrainian defense forces will now be strengthened as much as possible, they will still only control the left bank of the seam. They have come to terms with this and have begun to build certain fortifications on the right bank of the seam. They are already ready to give up the left bank of the seam. The Kremlin does not accept any pressure from the population. Our actions there are carried out according to two objectives, ensuring the security of the Sumi region and tying down enemy forces, the reserve colonel of the armed forces of Ukraine noted. The several thousand Russian civilians still living in territory occupied by Ukrainian troops are mostly elderly and largely cut off from the outside world with no electricity or phone network, according to Ukrainian soldiers. Ukrainian soldiers deployed as part of Kyiv's shock offensive into Russia's western Kursk region told AFP of a coexistence with the locals despite initial mistrust from residents exposed to Russian state media portrayals of Ukrainians as monsters. The incursion two and a half years after Moscow invaded Ukraine is the first time a foreign army has entered Russia since the end of World War II. Ukraine says it controls around 100 border settlements over an area of around 1,000 square kilometers, a humiliation for President Vladimir Putin. Russian authorities have said tens of thousands of civilians fled at the start of the incursion. The number that remained has not been made public. Oleksiy Dmitrashkivsky, spokesman for Ukraine's military administration in the Kursk region, said several thousand Russian civilians are still there. The Ukrainian soldiers said living conditions are difficult and civilians have to rely on their own reserves and vegetable gardens or else the food, water and medicine the Ukrainian military says it is distributing. They also reported that shops and pharmacies no longer work. Electricity and mobile phone networks have been shut down and Russian forces, which launched a counter-offensive in September, are constantly bombarding the area. Changes in Russia's nuclear doctrine are intended to discourage Ukraine's Western allies from supporting attacks on Russia, the Kremlin said Thursday. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said that the revisions in the document announced by President Vladimir Putin are a signal warning those countries about the consequences in case of their involvement in an attack on our countries with various assets, not necessarily nuclear ones. In a strong, new message to the West, Putin said Wednesday that any nation's conventional attack on Russia that is supported by a nuclear power will be considered a joint attack on his country. The threat? outlined in a revision of Moscow's nuclear doctrine, was clearly aimed at discouraging the West from allowing Ukraine to strike Russia with longer-range weapons and appears to significantly lower the threshold for the possible use of Russia's nuclear arsenal. Speaking during a meeting that discussed changes in the nuclear doctrine, Putin didn't specify whether the modified document envisages a nuclear response to such an attack, but he emphasized that Russia could use nuclear weapons in response to a conventional assault posing a critical threat to our sovereignty, a vague formulation that leaves broad room for interpretation. Russia is making slow but steady gains in Ukraine as the conflict grinds through its third year, and the Kremlin is seeking to discourage stronger Western support for Kyiv. Putin emphasized that the revised doctrine spells out conditions for using nuclear weapons in greater detail, noting they could be used in case of a massive air attack. И ранее здравомыслящие э, главы государств, здравомыслящие политики, аналитики прекрасно понимают и понимали серьезность заявления президента Путина. Тем более, когда речь идет о таком, такой беспрец беспрецедентной конфронтации, спровоцированной прямым вовлечением э, западных стран, в том числе и ядерных держав, 
в конфликт вокруг Украины. Разумеется, происходит корректировка ядерного сдерживания с учетом тех элементов напряженности, которые складываются по периметру наших границ. Когда будет опубликовано, сейчас я вам не могу это ответить. President Putin's spokesperson Dmitry Peskov on Wednesday sharply criticized Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's who called for unspecified global action to force Russia into peace. Such a position is a fatal mistake, Peskov said. On Tuesday Zelensky dismissed the notion of peace talks with Moscow, calling instead for unspecified global action to force Russia into peace for invading his country and to comply with the UN Charter's requirement that every country respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all other nations. The Kremlin spokesperson claimed that it was a profound misconception, adding that it will inevitably have consequences for the Kiev regime. Peskov also rejected UK Foreign Secretary David Lamy's accusations at the UN Security Council meeting of Russia tearing up UN statute. We do not agree with this position, Peskov said. He added that Russia acts in accordance with all principles and norms of international law, which includes protecting its legitimate interests. No, from my point of view, such a position is a fatal mistake. Фатальная ошибка, системная ошибка – это глубочайшее заблуждение, которое, конечно же, неизбежно будет иметь последствия для киевского режима. Мы не согласны с такой позицией, мы неоднократно об этом говорили. Россия действует в строгом соответствии со всеми принципами и нормами международного права в том числе защищая свои законные интересы. И, конечно, конечно, Россия выступает категорически против применения двойных стандартов в трактовке международного права. Этим славятся и Великобритания, и Соединенные Штаты. Russia launched new strikes in the Ukrainian city of Zaporizhia, leaving one dead and six wounded, including two children, authorities said Tuesday morning. Emergency workers worked in the dark to clear debris and extinguish fires early Tuesday. It was the second consecutive night glide bomb attack on Zaporizhia, damaging residential buildings and critical infrastructure according to local authorities. Governor of Zaporizhia Oblast Ivan Fedorov said Monday's attack was the first time glide bombs targeted the city since the war began. <laughs> 